This is my custom Ibanez BTV six string bass. And in this video, I'm gonna show you and demonstrate all the different specifications and my thought processes that went into building this instrument. My name is Benjamin J. Shepherd, and you're watching Bass with Benjamin. So this is my Ibanez custom made BTB six string bass. And this bass was made for me by Ibanez at their Los Angeles custom shop. And they started building it in around 2021, I believe. And this got delivered to me in 2022. And let me just start off by saying I've, uh, been playing Ibanez basses for well over 20 years. I've been endorsed with them for about 13 years now. Um, and some of my other basses back here, except for the upright bass, uh, are Ibanez basses. And for, for those of you who have seen me play, I usually use the Groove Line bass. Uh, that's the six string back there, and I have a five string, which is now a fretless, actually. I mean, it's been a fretless for the past six years or so. But, uh, and then I have many other basses. This thing back here on the side right here, that is an Ibanez. I, I know it looks like another um, company's bass, which I won't mention, uh, but it is not. It is also an Ibanez from the 70s and I have a couple of these uh, vintage Ibanez uh, bases which are really cool but this video is all about this thing right here this thing that has been many years of just a, a thought process and trying out different instruments and just try, trying to put some things together this instrument is kind of a uh, came about from just those experiences. How did this just kind of get started? Well, like I said, I've been um, an endorsed artist by Ibanez for 13 years, and so we have a pretty cool relationship. They've been a great and wonderful supportive company to me, um, and I've always loved Ibanez basses. I've always felt really comfortable playing Ibanez, and um, they've always been really cool to me, especially the artist representation. Um, and, you know, we've become great friends. And so that's it, it's a it's a good fit. Um, and so it, it got to a point where my, my main groove line six string bass, which I've used, I've taken everywhere all over the world and have used on many countless uh, gigs and recording sessions. It's probably 
one of the most versatile instruments that I've ever played. They were very short-lived, they didn't last very long, um, but they are like, if you can find one, they are just absolute like beasts of an instrument. The thing is, over the years, um, th this instrument is very heavy, the, the groove line, and when you're carrying it on your back or you're just doing long sets, it, uh, it starts to hurt your shoulder. I've developed a style and a sound and my thing, you know, with this groove line. Um, so there are aspects about it that I wanted to include in another instrument. So I got talking uh, with my friend at Ibanez and said, hey, you know, would it be possible to do a custom, just a, a custom made instrument to my specifications with some stuff that uh, features that are already on some of the um, production models, but mainly very, very customized. And, you know, he was really open. And one day we, ha we had a phone call and we talked for like maybe almost two hours of just what was it that I wanted to do? I kind of went in with an open mind, but also with some ideas and just wanted to get a yay or nay about uh, certain things. I don't know a whole bunch about woods on an instrument and there's that whole argument that, you know, the woods don't make a difference to the sound and, and all that. I'm not going to get into that argument. Um, the, the woods that I chose were very close to, well, essentially almost the same as what the groove line is uh, got going on. And that's what I was told um, w uh, during this little um, consultation process uh, with my friend. He said, you know what, a, a good way of getting what it is that you want is to put things in there that you're familiar with. You know, don't just go for all these like extravagant like options because what might happen is that, you know, you get this instrument and it doesn't turn out the way that you want it. And, you know, it might just look better than it actually feels and sounds. So go with something that you know works for you and just embellish it from there, which I think was a was a great idea. You know, this is my first custom instrument and I wanted it to be right. So he, he said, you know, let's go with what's on your groove line, like the things that you really love about the groove line. And we can incorporate that into this custom base and just then put in some of the custom mods. So excellent idea. So in terms of the woods, it's a alder body and ash top and back for the uh, for the body and for the neck um, and the fingerboard so the fingerboard is this beautiful bird's eye maple um, and i wanted to have something that was different from the groove line for that uh, sonically as well i wanted to, to have something that was a little more snappier and brighter the groove line has this beautiful like warm rich tone um, so I wanted to have something that was just the, the opposite for that which would serve the purpose of like okay the, the instrument has a different purpose I don't like to have two of the same instruments and the only difference being is that the, the color is different um, the neck you can see what do we got one two three four five yeah just a five piece neck um this i believe is i think it's purple heart um obviously this is maple but i'm pretty sure that's the, the stripes of purple heart either way it's very solid you can see it's got five bolts and um and that's the other thing too so I haven't said this as yet, but this body shape, this is the BTB uh, shape. And this is, yes, based off of their current production line of the BTBs. And why did I choose this shape? Originally, I wanted to have, I asked, can we do a groove line shape? And unfortunately, they weren't, weren't able to do that because it's not in production it's a whole other thing and i was like okay but sure fair enough um so i said how about the btb 
model we could, we could do that because i used to have a btb six string bass like many years ago so i'm very familiar with the btb the thing that's different going back to the to the bolts here is that the btbs now they don't have bolts they're all neck through bases and i said I'd, I'd like to have it as a bolt-on because that's what i'm used to all my bases are bolt-ons and i do like having that option of yeah being able to take off the neck i just like to have that flexibility and i guess i'm just used to that sound and feel of the, the bolts so and also it was going to be an easier build as well and that's what i really like um i didn't want it to be one of those like sophisticated kind of projects so anyway carrying on so those are the words um the finish that i came up with now this is a nice beautiful um like matte finish um yeah i just wanted to do something different a matte finish in this beautiful kind of two-tone like orange to kind of brown kind of vibe um which is also different from many of my other bases the other bases are like kind of solid colors the electronics okay i i know that from the beginning of this video you're just staring at the electronics and going what is going on over there and you're right what is going on here now this is kind of the the basis of just uh the main focus of what i wanted on this instrument is the electronics and for me that's where i feel that a lot of the tone and the sound comes from so obviously we have three pickups going on here now these two pickups here are the sonic arch cap pickups that are developed by ibanez and these pickups are incredible they're, they're on my groove line um, so that's why I wanted to have them on here because I just love the way they sound and feel they're radiused as well to match the, the radius of the strings so um, they just feel really good really powerful um, punchy um, yeah just a very musical sounding pickups um, quiet as well and where I have them I have them in the 60s jazz bass um, position and that's kind of being that's like my favorite especially where this bridge pickup is that's like my favorite position it's got the right amount of growl and you know it's just that sweet spot it's not too nasally sounding um i kind of sometimes feel like that with the the 70s position it's just a little too close to the the bridge that's just my opinion you know that's just how i feel even though i do have a 70s actually uh, the, the bass behind me, Ibanez bass, is a 70s jazz bass copy, um, but it's specifically for that sound. That's why I have it. But for doing my thing, I like it in the 60s position. The middle pickup, all right, this giant P bass pickup right here, that is an Aguilar pickup, and it's like their 60s style wound pickup. Um, and I chose this pickup because I i've tried some bases over the years um that had aguilar pickups and they, they make they make really great stuff so and and this was also a for a p bass pickup for a six string bass this was something that was ready to go it's readily uh, available um now th this is actually not in the typical position of where a p bass would be a p bass it would be a little closer over here where this neck pickup is so this is a little further back and so it actually gets a totally different sound than a p bass does and i'll show you shortly what that sounds like and then the 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 electronics okay we've got lots of switches here which i love i just love switches and and knobs and dials and all that um i wanted this this pickup system to be pretty straightforward you know there's no blend knob because i'm not into like okay i want to have about you know 26.8 uh, percent of the neck pickup and uh you know 48 and a half of the i'm not into that it's either the pickup is on or it's off so these the top row of switches right here it just on and off switches for each pickup so that's just that's just what it is engage or turn them off and a really cool bonus 
thing that um, is uh, really cool is when you have you can leave your volume up I can just turn all the switches off and it's just like a mute so I can leave that set I had it, it definitely scared me a couple of times when I first got this bass and the first time I plugged it in and I turned up the volume the, the, the switches are all way down I plugged it in and I'm just like oh it, it, uh, it doesn't uh, it doesn't work huh hmm um, it doesn't, uh, you know, I'm checking the cable and all that. I'm like, oh, I got the vibe. Like, is the is my cabinet plugged in properly? Like, I mean, that's uh, and then I'm doing, and then I'm like, oh, oh, uh, okay, yeah. So I, I, I have to turn each pickup on. <laughs> but anyway, that's how that works. And um, so I have a volume. I have a tone control right here so this works um, in active and passive mode I have them installed on all of my bases actually as opposed to where you get a little more string noise going on and then I got a three band EQ over here so bass mid treble and then these other two switches active and passive um, and then I have a mid frequency switch. It's a, it's a select. I have no idea what the frequencies are. All I know is that one of them is a high mid and the other is low mid. That's it. Um, I have those options there if I need to use them, but I generally keep the EQ pretty flat, um, which is really cool. And this preamp, it's actually made by Nordstrand, um, which, uh, which is really cool. I've been a fan of Nordstrand Electronics. Um, I think Carrie Nordstrand makes some really great stuff, um, pickups and preamps and all that. So I was like, yeah, I, I want to have a Nordstrand preamp in this space. So the, the electronics section is very unique. It's kind of like an amalgamation of many different things. We've got the Sonic Arch Cat pickups, we've got this Agula um, P bass pickup, and we've got this Nordstrand um, preamp which is really cool and it's a 9 volt battery um, in in the back and, and that's it so um, just to show you what the each pickup configuration sounds like um, so li, li, I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with these two pickups right here just the the two jazz bass uh, pickups um, I'm just gonna have everything flat and just the tone up a bit so it's a very traditional sound. It's that traditional jazz bass sound that's the purpose of that is to do that if i was to just do the the, the neck pickup we get that kind of p bass and if you really roll the tone off you can Um, yeah, beautiful, just deep, rich, warm sound. And that's the, that's the cool thing is that even though, yes, this is a brighter instrument, it can still get a very nice, warm sound. So then, um, if I add the middle pickup, it gets this interesting sound, kind of P-Bass-ish. <laughs> And because it has th this part of the, the P bass pickup being more uh, on the treble side being closer to the bridge, it's going to make those higher frequencies. Of course, 
down here on the, the, the low B string. Very clear, very tight sounding, really nice and fat. Um, if I turn off the, the neck pickup and just put on this middle pickup, the, the, this is a really interesting sound. I have no idea what it is, but it's kind of cool. I want to say it like maybe because of the treble side, it almost gives a Music Man kind of vibe, but it's got the 60s kind of mid-range honk to it, which I really like. Especially when you play up high, it's it, it's really great for, for soloing and just playing like melodies. And chords as well. So it, it's an interesting sound. Um, I'm still getting used to, to that and just trying to figure out, you know, how, how to use that sound properly but it's uh, I dig it um, and then if I put in the bridge pickup then I get this that's almost got a similar music man vibe but um almost kind of like r real uh almost like 80s slap Um, yeah, it really interesting when you have these two together and then just the bridge pickup gives you that bridge pickup growl. So that's the, oh, one more. You put all three on and it's no different than what it sounds like with just these two. I think just because these two pickups here are sonically different than the middle pickup and they have a little more brightness. This middle pickup, when you put it in, it just adds like just an extra element that is kind of cool actually. <laughs> Now, if I was to take it off, put it back in, it kind of gives just a little bit of like maybe some high mids in there and just maybe lifts up the low end. So it kind of just, it's almost like a reinforcement on either side, um, which, which is really cool. It's really handy. Um, it definitely lifts up the level just a little bit when you because you've got all three pickups going so that's what all three of the um the pickup configurations sound like as you can see and hear there's many different sounds and tones that you can just get out of that and that's just using the pickup switching by itself when you combine it with like the the use of the eq and um active and passive then it's just so many options there and that was the point in this instrument was that it could get many different sounds i like changing sounds and using sounds for different songs and different gigs and just to give different vibes and that's just what i wanted to do with this bass um other features on this instrument so looking at the bridge um this is a hip shot bridge and we wanted to go for a very light bridge um on my groove line it's an extremely heavy bridge it's really solid um that's why 
it's such a solid sounding instrument. Um, but this thing is really light, but it sounds really good. And it's, it's very strong, um, very easy to use. And in the tuners, the, the machines um, are also hip shot as well. So it's like, yeah, let's have a matching pair. Why, why not? Um, the low B is a drop switch and that will take it down to a low A. Now, one thing I should point out, the scale length of this instrument, it's 34 inches. Um, a BTB is typically 35, but I'm used to 34. Um, and this, again, it's one of those arguments where like, ah, oh, you know, like, you get a better sounding B string, you gotta have like over 34. Well, I haven't had that problem. Um, I'm pretty happy with how the B string sounds, very balanced with the other strings. And when I take it down to an A, it's really meaty, like really. Um, I'm still getting used to flicking the switch and figuring out how to properly choreograph that uh, transition as well um but you know custom instrument i thought like hey let's put a let's put a drop switch on there you know let's really just extend the range by like two more notes why not there's a zero fret in here um and that's something that's typical on the btb that's standard on there um i said sure why not let's let's just do that um and i like it just gives the open strings a very nice clear consistency as you can hear everything is very balanced um yeah that that's more or less it it's a very light instrument i'd say it's like almost 50 percent lighter than my groove line um and that was the purpose of this instrument um i guess there was some wood combinations i can't remember what it was which i had initially said to my friend ivan is like hey can we do like this like spalted maple or, or whatever um I, I can't remember now and he said yeah we can do it but just understand that it's gonna be like a beast is gonna be heavy and I'm like oh okay and then that's when he suggested like go with the wood combinations on your groove line you know what it sounds like you know what it feels like um, he really helped make this process so easy the only hard part about it was the waiting <laughs> that was the only, that was the only thing waiting and being anxious and wondering like uh, this, is it going to be good? I mean, even though, yes, they are extremely skilled builders and luthiers, but is it going to be what I imagine? I'll tell you, it turned out to be way better than I ever imagined. Right, when I opened up the case and saw this thing, I, I was just absolutely just my jaw was on the floor. I think for maybe the first hour, like I didn't pick it up to, to play it. I just stared at it. I just looked at it. You know, it's like when you like get get a new car and you, you can't help but just like just just look at it. It's the same thing right here. So I'm extremely grateful to such an amazing company, Ibanez um, Guitars, for essentially making my dream instrument come true and for supporting me all these years and making incredible products. I've had this space for almost two years now and you've probably seen it on some of my social media videos and, and all that and people have been asking me, hey, can you do a, a rundown video of the instrument, of the bass? And I never got around to it, but here it is. And this is just to show you what an incredible instrument this is and just how much I love it. It's or right out of the box. It's already so easy to play. And that was the other thing too, having an instrument like this, I wanted to have something that was set up to just fly. Um, even though my basses are all set up to, um, to be easily played. But this one in particular, it's, you know, it's, it's supposed to be like a sports car where like you can just rip on it and 
they have done such an incredible job and these are and let me point out these are the same luthiers same builders who have made instruments for steve vai i mean they made the steve vai hydra guitar um joe satriani uh even Tosa Nabasi, um, Gary Willis, they made Thundercats bass as well, and a couple of his basses, in fact. So I'm very fortunate and honored to have had the hands of those master craftsmen and builders at the Los Angeles Custom Shop put together this incredible beast of an instrument. And once again, Thank you so much for joining me and watching this video. If you really like this and you want to see more stuff from me, please like and subscribe. And also, please visit my website, Bass with Benjamin, where I have all kinds of different courses um, and music resources for learning the bass guitar and learning music in general. And I have a free weekly newsletter that you can sign up to to get free bass tips and exercises and funny and inspirational stories to your inbox every single week. So go check that out in the links down in the description. Thank you so much. Take care and I'll see you soon. Hey, thanks for checking out my video. I didn't always sound like that, you know, and it took me quite a while to get to a level where I just felt comfortable with my own bass playing. So over the years and learning some things the hard way, I realized that I could have gotten there much quicker had I just known the information. So if you're a bass player, you want to sound better, you want to get some more gig opportunities, I've put together this free course where I share my six breakthrough tips to give you the head start that I wish I had. And with these tips that I learned, it's gotten me to the stage where I'm at today. So if you're interested, click down below on the link to get this free course.